think it's probably the right move. Um, after bishop d3, I was afraid of this sort of variation. He plays bishop takes bishop. Sorry, technical difficulties there. Uh, he plays bishop takes bishop, and then perhaps some sort of knight g4 move. Um, and the problem is, he's getting some nasty tempo gainers on my queen, and it's actually a real pain. This knight's pinned at the moment, so I'll, if I just castle, for example, trying to unpin, I get mated on the spot um, with queen takes h2 mate. So obviously castling isn't an idea. Um... I've got to play some kind of h3 move, or maybe bishop d2, you know, something like that, maybe b3, uh, trying to stop this c4 advance. So let's say I play h3, like, quite casually. Uh, I'm actually going to get really, you know, really, really badly destroyed on the light squares. He's just going to play knight back to e5, attacking my queen. And let's say I play something like, I don't know, queen d1. Uh, maybe queen c2 is better, I don't know. But now black can play c4, and suddenly he's getting this really good knight on d3. Um, and even though I can castle, that knight on d3 is going to be a horror. I can't get rid of it without sacking an exchange or something. Um, I can maybe undermine the c4 pawn with b3. But again, that's giving black play on the queen side, which is where he's got a lot of space. And um, it's generally quite unpleasant here, actually. So this was exactly the sort of variation that I wanted to avoid. Um... Rather than knight g4, Peter may even be able to play c4 immediately in that other position. Um, here, rather than knight g4, perhaps uh, perhaps c4 immediately with the idea of knight g4 to e5 to d3. Um, is you know it's quite it's quite easy to see. It's just an invasion on my light squares. Um, yeah, it, it can be quite painful, but I didn't play. I didn't play bishop d3. Anyway, I played queen d1, um, which again I think is possibly. It seems accurate at first, but you know, again, it leaves me in a dodgy position. Um, if I play queen b3, however, I, I think that would have been wrong because after knight d7, you know, he's playing rook b8, getting tempos on my queen. I can't put my queen on c4 because of like knight b6. It's uh, it, that would be quite nasty. So it's either it's either this or bishop d3. Um, obviously I can't capture this bishop on f5 because my knight is still pinned. So black now plays bishop g4, uh, attacking my queen on d1. So I play bishop e2, um, just you know, unpinning this knight for starters. So he's got to play bishop takes bishop really, unless he wants to play his bishop all the way back home again, which you know obviously isn't very pleasant. So after bishop takes bishop, I play queen takes. I could have played knight takes, that was an option. Um, with the idea that I'll just castle and then my queen isn't in the line of this rook. But actually, I think putting my queen there isn't that bad. Um, you know, this knight's never really going to move, he can't get any tempos on it, it's well defended by the bishop. It's. Uh, I think playing queen there is absolutely fine. Um, so black plays knight bd7. I mean, there is this idea, actually, uh, for black after queen e2, of trying to sneakily um, play knight bd7 uh, and then f5, f4 uh, because of these pins, but I am just in time to sort of, you know, sort myself out here. Uh, I can easily play queen c4 and then his king's just a bit weak on this diagonal. So, none of that sort of stuff is working. Uh, so he plays knight bd7, which I think is probably the best move, just getting developed. Um, and now I castled. So I've finally gotten castled, I'm finally vaguely starting to untangle. I'm still a pawn up, and Peter's still got a certain compensation here, but uh, I'm in this position in the game, I was starting to feel like things were coming together a little bit for me. So, uh, Peter played knight e5, uh, which I think is a, is a fine move. It's, uh, it's, you know, getting the knight to a good square. Again, it's got these threats of c4 and, uh, and you know, coming in with the knight to d3, which I've got to stop really. Uh, I can either play knight to c4, or I can play f4. I hadn't seen knight to c4 in the game, actually. I didn't really think about that possibility. Uh, I was getting a bit obsessed with this f4, and then maybe I get a kingside attack. Um, the computer's saying that knight c4 is just a better move, which I can I can agree with, to be honest. Um, I thought about knight c4 in the game, 
Uh, and I was... Oh! I thought about Knight C4 in the game, and I was a bit scared of these kind of discovered attacks, but actually they aren't anything. Uh, the Knight can never really come anywhere that threatening. Um, with these discovered attacks on the Queen, of course. But, like I say, the Knight can never really come anywhere that threatening. I've got threats of playing D6 if he tries anything tricky. Like, for example, if he, if he goes Knight G4, uh, I will just play D6, uh, attacking his Queen. And after, say, rook takes queen, pawn takes queen, I've got serious threats here. This pawn isn't easy for black to pick up. They're on c7. Uh, let's just show you that. It's going to be d6. There. After rook takes queen, pawn takes queen. Um, this isn't that bad for me. I've got bishop f4 to defend the pawn. Uh, and I'm threatening things like knight here or knight here to threaten to queen. Uh, so this this is really quite dodgy for black, actually. He doesn't, he doesn't want to go in for any of that. But in the game, I was a bit scared of that. I didn't analyze it properly, uh, so I just went f4, which is an okay move, I think. He's uh, he's almost got to play knight knight to g4. That's it, it's encouraged here, uh, and I play queen f3. I can probably play queen takes g4 immediately. Oh no, sorry, not in this position. I beg your pardon. That's uh, that's something else. That's uh, I'm getting confused there. Uh, obviously, it's defended by the knight. Um, so after queen f3, I'm just threatening to capture here. Now I'm threatening to play knight takes knight, knight takes knight, queen takes knight. Threatening to win a piece. So black plays knight takes e3. And I play bishop takes e3. And suddenly, my position's not that bad. Uh, it's not unreasonable. Uh, I'm still a pawn up. Black still has some compensation. My pieces are very artificially placed. I've got this weak b pawn. But a pawn is a pawn. Uh, I think I'm probably holding a slight advantage here. Uh, you know, obviously the computer can say what it says, but in a complicated position like this, it's it's hardly worth looking at the computer, really. Humans will never find computer defense. Um, so, you know, I mean, the computer does say I have a slight advantage, but, I mean, regardless of the computer, I think I, I, I probably do. So, he plays rook a b8, which is probably the best. Uh, and so I just defend with rook a b1. Um, you know, quite natural. And now black plays this tricky knight g4, uh, which again is actually computer accurate from uh, 2200 piece Lalich. Uh, if I take this knight, he's going to take my bishop. Uh, there's not much else I can do. Uh, if I drop this bishop back to d2, then it's another game altogether. I keep my dark square bishop, but the bishop's still passive. Uh, it keeps a few pieces on the board, admittedly, but um, you know, when I'm when I'm a pawn up and trying to defend, that's not really what I want. I want to swap pieces off and uh, and try and uh, alleviate some pressure. So this happened. Uh, he's got his rook on e3 now. And I actually continued with f5 here. Um, trying to press forward on the king side. Because I, at the moment my queen side are weirdly kind of solid. It's, you know, my knight's defending my a4 pawn. You know, my, rook, my rooks are doubled on my back rank. Just defending everything there. Um... I might someday consider advancing this uh, d pawn. So I decided I'd try and create some pressure on the king side, maybe distract this queen and rook, and then try and press forward with this d pawn, something like that. That was the sort of thinking I was going through at this stage. So after f5, uh, we actually see rook b4. It's worth noting that by this stage we were both in rather serious time trouble. The time controls in the 4 NC out. The first time control is after 2 hours and you've got to make 40 moves. And by this point, me and Peter only had about 15 minutes left each for about 12 moves. He had slightly more than me. Um, but we were we were getting fairly short. It's, it's not a huge amount of time for 12 moves, 15 minutes, and there were no increments. So I carried on with Queen G5, and I'd completely missed, actually, that my Queen is just trapped after H6. Uh, obviously, what I thought I was doing was attacking this Rook. The Rook moves, and then you know I'm getting some sort of pressure. Uh, I'll play f6 or something like that. Uh, I hadn't entirely worked it out, I have to be honest, but uh, I thought queen g5 was probably a good move to attacking the rook and uh, placing the queen nicely. But what I'd miss is after h6, uh, I can't... Well, I have to take the rook, because otherwise my queen is trapped. It has no other squares. Uh, I have to play queen takes rook, and now bishop d4 is nasty. It's certainly quite nasty, and... Obviously, I'm getting a piece and a rook from my queen, but it's not what I wanted in this position. I'm in time trouble against the 2200, and he's got an imbalance, which is 
the last thing that I need, that's where 2200s thrive, is in balanced positions where they can really show off their superior technique. Um, so I tried here with rook e1, but uh, it's this this is quite bad now. Uh, he plays. He actually played g takes f5, just getting rid of that pawn. If I had managed to advance that pawn to f6 later on, then maybe I'd have had some threats. Uh, so he just takes it, admittedly doubling his pawns, but uh, probably a good move. I played king h1, trying to get out of this pin, uh, forcing him to play bishop takes queen immediately. Um, and now he plays queen f4, which is, again, probably a very accurate move. Um, he's in time trouble, and he's just playing better moves than me at this point. Um, I'm being sent down rather quickly after this. I played rook e1, which is almost forced. There are lots of back rank threats, uh, you know, I can't move this rook anywhere else because he'll play rook takes b2. For example, if I play something like, um, you know, rook f3, for example, he will play. Oh, he can't play. He can't play rook b2 immediately because then I can take the queen. But uh, he'll move his queen somewhere, creating some sort of threat like queen e5. Uh, now he's starting to play rook takes b2 and back rank maybe. me. So there's not really much point in doing any of that. I just played rook e1 covering. And now he played queen d6, just blockading my pawn. I thought I had some chances here. This is very complicated. Um, I thought if I could get this pawn going, then perhaps um, perhaps I'll have some chances of making something happen. Uh, so I played rook f1, because at the moment my rooks have no outposts to try and you know move this pawn forward at all. So I was trying to provoke some advances here. Uh, and he played, he played f4. Uh, now I played rook b to d1, defending my d-pawn again, uh, just trying to get some sort of square for my knight, uh, so my knight can attack the queen and then get something going here. Um, and yeah, that's literally the extent of my thought process at the moment, because um, when you're in time trouble, I mean, obviously I was panicking and I was trying to, uh, I was trying desperately to find some way, so I thought I'd provoke this pawn forward so I could get that, uh, that crucial e4 square for my knight. So after rook b to d1, he plays king g7, which is actually an annoying move, because what it means is, if he ever takes this pawn, there's no chance of forking that piece and his king with a knight, for example. Uh, king g7 just getting off any checks at the back rank as well. It's just, you know, quite. It's a good move to play in time trouble, just removing some of the threats of your opponent. So I played rook f e1, preparing uh, knight e4, and he played rook d4. And here I just blundered with uh, with knight d4, with knight e4. I beg your pardon. I'm afraid. Uh, and this was the end, really. The game continued for a few more moves. We got to the time control, uh, and here I resigned. Uh, this is this is just the end. Now I'm getting there are too many possibilities of forking my pieces. Uh, it's very very difficult to defend. I mean, it's it's certainly lost. This is this is the end. So uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, certainly very interesting stuff. Um, hopefully, I'll do a few more videos. I might do a video on my round six game against a man called Glenn Halfpenny. Um, I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.